This video will cover the hepatic portal system. Number 1. The liver receives blood from the gastrointestinal tract. The liver has over 500 functions. In order for the liver to perform these functions, it is important that the liver receives blood from numerous organs to receive the biomolecules necessary for the many tasks the liver performs. Blood flows from all the major organs of the gastrointestinal tract into the liver. It is the hepatic portal vein that receives blood from the organs of the gastrointestinal tract and provides blood to the liver. More specifically, the inferior mesenteric vein and the small gastric vein drain into the splenic vein, and the splenic vein drains into the hepatic portal vein. The superior mesenteric vein, right gastric vein, and left gastric vein all drain into the hepatic portal vein. Thus, the hepatic portal vein receives venous blood from the stomach, the small intestines, the large intestine, as well as venous blood from the gallbladder, spleen, and pancreas. The hepatic portal vein allows for blood from all major organs of the gastrointestinal tract to enter the liver through one vein. Once in the liver, the hepatic portal vein branches into right and left hepatic veins, and a smaller middle or intermediate vein. There are also small hepatic veins referred to as short hepatic veins. All of these hepatic veins eventually drain into the inferior vena cava. Thus, before blood from the gastrointestinal tract reaches the inferior vena cava, the gastrointestinal blood passes through the liver. The hepatic portal vein is called a portal vein because it leads into the hepatic portal system. A portal system is an arrangement of blood vessels such that blood passes from a capillary bed into larger blood vessels and then into another capillary bed. Ordinarily, blood flows from a capillary bed into the venous system and eventually back into the heart. In the case of a portal system, blood flows from a capillary bed into the venous system, but then flows through another capillary bed before returning to the heart. When blood must pass through more than one separate capillary bed, a portal system exists. In the case of the liver, the two different capillary beds of the portal system are the capillaries of the gastrointestinal tract and the capillaries in the liver. Number 2. Blood that flows through the liver is mixed blood. Most organs receive blood flow from arteries, and blood flows out of the organs through venules or veins, meaning blood in the venous system is leaving an organ. Because of its portal system, the liver receives blood from the venous system, and does not only receive blood from the arterial system. In fact, blood from the hepatic portal vein provides 75 to 80 percent of all blood that circulates through the liver. The hepatic artery only provides around 20 to 25 percent of the blood that circulates through the liver. The liver overall demands about 25 percent of cardiac output. However, the liver has yet another unusual characteristic of its circulation in how the capillaries of the liver form. As the hepatic veins become smaller to form capillaries in the liver, branches from the hepatic artery converge with branches from the hepatic veins to form the capillary bed. Thus, the capillaries in the liver, which are known as sinusoids, receive blood from the arterial system and the venous system. Ordinarily, capillaries only receive blood from the arterial system. This means that as blood flows through the liver, it is mixed blood consisting of oxygenated arterial blood and deoxygenated venous blood. The partial pressure of oxygen in the sinusoids of the liver is lower than in most oxygenated areas of the body as a result. This arrangement allows for the cells of the liver, which are known as hepatocytes, to receive the biomolecules they require from the hepatic portal vein, while also receiving the oxygen and nutrients they need from the hepatic artery. Number 3. The sinusoids of the liver have a unique structure. The layer of cells that lines blood vessels and directly contacts the blood, known as endothelium, is different in the sinusoids of the liver than anywhere else in the human body. Endothelial cells on most capillaries are tightly bound together and only become fenestrated as part of an immune response. For more detail on fenestration, see the video on this channel on inflammation. Endothelial cells are also usually bound together by a basement membrane that offers support. Liver sinusoidal endothelial cells, or LSECs, are always fenestrated with gaps that are a distance of 0.1 microns between cells. LSECs also lack a basement membrane. 
The thin, single layer of cells making up the sinusoids and their fenestrated nature allow for maximum transport of biomolecules out of the blood and into the liver. Once absorbed from the blood, biomolecules enter the space of DISI and are able to come into contact with hepatocytes for further hepatic processing. On the other side of the space of DISI, and near the LSEX, are the hepatic stellate cells, or HSCs. HSCs are able to maintain healthy LSEX and hepatocytes through their secretions of chemical messengers. A proper balance between HSCs and LSEX is essential for effective transport from the blood into the liver. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel.